الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد وقال الله عز وجل في كتابه المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألا إن أولياء الله لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون الذين آمنوا واتقوا صدق الله العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين Dear respected brothers, elders, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In a hadith, Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as narrated by Sayyidina Abi Dhar and Mu'az ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhumah narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Ittaqillah haythu ma kunt Fear Allah wherever you are Wa atbi'i sayyata al-hasr tatamhuha or yamhuha and follow a sin, any wrongdoing that you might have committed with a good deed lest so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may erase that bad deed hasan, and deal with or reach other people with very good akhlaq with good character the ayah al-mubarakah that I had the privilege of reciting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the awliya. Awliya meaning those who are the friends of Allah. The friends of Allah are those who have spent their lives in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in seeking Allah's mercy and forgiveness and in living their lives according to the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as received through the Quran al-Kareem and Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So Allah says, Ala inna awliya Allah. Verily, know that the friends of Allah, la khawfun alayhim, that they have no fear. They have no fear of retribution. They have no fear of punishment. They have no fear that they will be left alone. They have no fear other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you hear this verse and you hear this portion of the verse quite frequently. More often is what you hear is that awliya Allah have no fear. Awliya Allah have no fear in the maqam. But we also have to focus and understand how do the awliya and what is it that they do that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them such a high rank. Such a high maqam, such confidence that they have no fear. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala claims that in the Quran Kareem, Allah inna awliya Allahi la khawfun alayhim wa lahum yahzanun. That they don't have fear and they do not have they don't have sorrow. They don't. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the same verse, which is where we need to focus, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then bring us to that level where we are from amongst those who will have no fear of this dunya and who will have no huzn, no sorrow of the akhirah. And that is that they are the ones who have believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are the ones who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it is these two major attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is highlighting as an expression as a way to define the awliya Allah. That they are firm believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That they are thabit. That they are, they are, their foundation is extremely strong. No matter what the conditions are. No matter what the situation is. No matter what they're experiencing. No matter what they're dealing with. They are sound. They are confident in their position. In their belief. In their tawakkul. In their belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That whatever good comes to them is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever bad comes to them is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They firm believe that their lives are given to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever that they own is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever qualities, wealth, health, 
whatever they, they have that they possess is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are firm believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladheena amanu. Amanu in whom? They believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They believe that Allah is the ultimate sustainer. They believe that Allah is the ultimate provider. They, they, they believe that Allah is the only one who can give them the help and nusra and, and success and victory over those who are against the Muslim and Islam. They have the firm belief that, they, that Allah is the one who is going to provide them their meals every day. Allah is the one who is going to give them the life, the length of life that they have. Uh, on this earth. Allah is the one who will give them children. Allah is the one who will give them anything and everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that we would have to all return whenever we are in need, whenever we are suffering, whenever we are enduring atrocities, like our brothers and sisters in Palestine are, like our brothers and sisters in all across the world, wherever Muslims are being tortured, Wherever Muslims are being humili humiliated, wherever Muslims <coughs> are being uh, hurt and disrespected and dishonored, they know that all of this means nothing. Because they know that Izza comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Might and power comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so does Dhilla. Sufferings also come with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we are enduring punishments, when we are enduring atrocities, we have to have patience in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because that is the way we can seek help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the past, Ben had mentioned that وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ That you seek that help from Allah with what? With patience, perseverance, and with prayers. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He talks about the awliya, he talks about those two characteristics. One is that they alladina amanu, that they are the ones who believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mukammal, kamil belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unwavering, unwavering belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without that belief, and that, that is what gives them the kamil iman. We are all Muslims, but we have many ahadith where Rasulullah says, La yu'minu ahadukum. Allah. Here Rasulullah is addressing the Muslims. Yet Rasulullah says, La yu'minu. Lughwi tarjuma. If we translate the word itself, it would come to mean that you don't you don't believe. But that's not what Rasulullah is saying. What Rasulullah is saying that your belief in Allah is not complete. La yu'minu ahadukum hatta akuna ahabba ilayhi min waladihi wa walidihi wa nasi azma'in. Your iman will not be complete until and unless you find me, yani Rasulullah, more beloved to your soul, more than your own child, your father, and everything else on. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى تحب ما حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه أو كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم that your iman will not be complete until you like or you love for your brother what you love for yourself. It cannot be that you go out and buy, let's say, you go to Umrah. This is very common. And you'd go and buy the best thobe that there is, the best tagia that there is, the best dates, thamar that there is. But then when it comes to distributing to your family no. members, what do you do? You go to the, the guy, the clerk and say, find me a cheaper section. No. And you go look for the cheaper thamar, the cheaper no. dates. You look for the cheaper brand quality of thobe that you want to gift Allah. You're still a Muslim. But the Rasulullah says, La yu'minu ahdukum. That your iman will not be complete no. until you love for your brother what you love for yourself. No. And so in the Arab, this culture is very strong. I know when I was very young, from first experience. And, and there's no shame in telling you how, as we live through life, we learn through our experiences. I went to a store, I said, I would like to buy baklava. He had an expensive kind and he had a cheap kind. I said, give me the cheap kind. He asked me, who are you buying it for? Yourself or somebody else? I said, no, no, I'm going to uh, a Dawat, uh, uh, an invitation. So he's like, if I were you, I would take the expensive one. And I believed him. He was not trying to sell me an expensive one. He could care less. It was a big store. But a lesson that I learned right there, it hit me in the, in the chest like a, like a punch. Allah, what was I thinking? And later on, when I came across this hadith, 
it made sense. Wow. At that time, it was in, in our culture, it's, it's, it's bad. When we are gifting somebody, you want to give somebody the best you can. Allah, this, is, this is one of the, the, the teachings. So Rasulullah says that you like for your brother what you like for yourself. So when you're gifting somebody, you gift them the best you can, that you can afford to. <coughs> of course, if you cannot afford to, that's a different story. But we are talking about Iman. And so when Allah is talking about the awliya, the awliya are the ones who had the firm and complete holistic Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And both in belief and in practice. How they deal, how they understand things. Everything is relates, relates to Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then Allah says, Allah says in the Quran Kareem, وَالَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ And those who fear Allah. Now, you know that uh, taqwa doesn't always just mean to fear Allah. Taqwa has many meanings. One of the common meanings of taqwa is to be God-weary. To know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you every time. So when Allah is watching you, you are muttaqi because you will do things the right way. You will do the right things and you will avoid the bad things. So doing the good thing and avoiding the bad thing. Lughwi ma'na of taqwa. Uh, linguistic meaning of taqwa is to protect your soul from something that harms your soul. Allah, think about it. How beautiful the Arabic language is and how deep the meanings are. The more you learn, oceans of knowledge uh, spread out. So taqwa in lugh, in, in lugh means to protect, to conceal, to save your body, save your soul, save yourself from something that would cause harm to you, to yourself. That's taqwa. Allahu Akbar. So when you are a muttaqi, from a linguistic meaning, you are protecting yourself. You're creating a shield. Allahu Akbar. And shara'an. Taqwa is when you do what Allah likes and you avoid what Allah dislikes. Subhanahu. That is taqwa in sharia. In sharia. Taqwa is that you do ma yuhibbullah. What Allah loves. Wajtanibu <coughs> ma yuharbullah. What Allah prohibits, you stay away from it. That is taqwa. So, our taqwa is based on the Islamic teachings. And the linguistic meaning, meaning is the backdrop. And so Allah is now talking about the awliya. So we constantly talk about awliya. They have a great rank. How did they get that great rank? What are those qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has identified for us? For which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they will have no fear and they will have no sorrow. It's their iman and the taqwa. So then we as followers of the teachings of Quran and Sunnah, Ummat of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we then have to have ourselves set those as our goals. Iman and Taqwa. Complete Iman and complete Taqwa. Iman, believe, tawakkul in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Reliance in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Believe in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Rely, complete reliance in Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And Taqwa, Everything that uh, is despised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we avoid, we protect ourselves from. We create a shield, we try to shield ourselves. And everything that Allah likes, everything that Allah loves, that Allah would, would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would do. And how do we know those, uh, know those, those things? We would know that by, by learning the Quran Kareem. We would know that by learning the seerah of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And without that, there is no guidance. As we move on, this is the month of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani, Ghawsi Azim Dastagir. And those are the teachings of all the awliya. And sure enough, that is, that is the teaching of the, the, the master of all of the awliya, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani, Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani. And those are the teachings that Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani uh, promoted always promoted is the taqwa and iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing the right thing avoiding the, the bad things yes we 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 enjoy we sing the the manqaba of Sayyidina Ghasiyat and Garbi Sharif but we also also need to adhere to the actual teachings of our beloved Imam our Shaykh our Peer 
Piro ke Pir. His teachings are very clear. And they are completely derived from Quran and the Sunnah of Sayyidina Rasulullah wow. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so the only way to be a true Qadri is to then follow the teachings that Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani has brought to us from Quran and Sunnah and the teachings of Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and from Ashab Kiram Ahlul Bayt. That is a true follow of Qadri. We have left that to the back burner, unfortunately. Because we are so much into the optics. We are so much into what seems to be. There's nothing wrong with the optics. We accept optics as long as they don't cross the boundaries of Sharia. Ah. But if we are going to leave the basics, if we are going to leave the, the wajibat, leave the things that, that please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only do things to express our love, expressing our love, we don't, uh, we don't take a step back from that. We are not like the others. We express our love, our unequivocal, unwavering love for awliya Allah. For, uh, and ultimately, uh, uh, in the creation of Allah, for Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that is wanted from us. Our love for Ahlul Bayt, it is wanted from us from the Quran. Our respect and dignity for all of the Sahaba, it is wanted from us. But that is not the only want that Allah uh, is looking to get from us. Allah wants us to follow. Allah says, if you love Allah, follow my Prophet. And Allah has Rasulullah say that to us. قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي Say, O Prophet to, the, to your people, that if you love Allah, if you want to please Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي Follow me, Rasulullah says. Follow me. So if we are not going to follow Rasulullah, but we only express our love for Rasulullah. I'm wearing green. Green... Uh, an expression of my my uh, my love for Rasulullah and Ghosif Baq and Ahl Bayt. All are expressions, but these expressions would be empty if I don't then follow the teachings and the path that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has carved for us that will lead us in the on the Salat al-Mustaqim ila al-Jannah. So if we don't follow the path that Rasulullah has carved for us, then no colors, no amama, no beard will do anything. In the hadith that I had shared, Rasulullah then says, Wherever you, you are, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talked about what the taqwa is, taqwa is ijtinab al-muharramat and uh, avoidance of what is haram and doing what is beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Rasulullah then goes on to say, وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ يَمْحُهَا Oh, come on, Rasulullah. And follow everyone, you know, your bad deeds, Qudana Khasa, God forbid, if we can, if you perform a bad deed, follow that bad deed with a good deed. The Shariheen al-Hadith, they say here, the good deed, Rasulullah said, refers to Tawbah. Whenever, and we are, uh, people who sin it is natural for us we sin Allah knows that but Allah wants all the sinners to repent and Allah loves those who repent tawwabin Allah says those who the word tawbah is repenting taib is one who repents tawwab is an exaggerated form of the word, meaning one who persistently seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah says, I love those who continuously seek my forgiveness. And hidden in that is, maybe you are a, you're a persistent sinner. That's why you persistently seek Allah's forgiveness. And maybe you're just a, a, a wali, you're, 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 a, you're a pious person who likes to seek Allah's forgiveness. Allah did not elaborate on that. Allah says, Tawabin, those who are always seeking my forgiveness, I love them. Wow. What more do we want? These are the ways of uh, the awliya. In another place in the Quran, Karim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَيَبِيتُونَ فِي لَيْلٍ And he talks about عِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ the, My servants, Allah says, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ The servants of Rahman. And then he describes who they, who they are. يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا That they walk on earth with, with humility. They, they're not boastful. And he talks about... Yeah, Yabituna, uh, uh, that they spend their nights 
in, in worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they also seek Allah's forgiveness. And they say, Ya Allah, protect us from the hellfire, for it is very painful. And this is about who? Already Allah is saying that they are my servants. So they are somebody, those who are already on the right path, already pious, but they are consistently seeking Allah's forgiveness. So we should be continually seeking Allah's forgiveness because that is another way of pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because we have, we have first things. So Rasulullah then says in the hadith that when you do a sin, God forbid, follow it up immediately with uh, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With a good deed. In another riwayah, Rasulullah says, when he was asked, what should we do? If we sin, what is the best and easiest way to do it? Say, La ilaha illallah. Oh, Say, La ilaha illallah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will erase your sin. This is the difference. One is, a person per performs a sin. It gets registered. Okay? By the kiram and and so Allah forgives it. So the sin is listed. And then there's a check mark maybe. Okay, this is forgiven. And, but that's not what the Rasulullah, Rasulullah says here. He says, Yamhu Allah. Allah will erase it as if you never conducted that sin. As if it never happened. As if when, when you'll be facing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be embarrassed to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that will not be existing in the books of your life. In the books of our deeds, Allah will completely have it erased. It will never be questioned. It, is, it will not be like, okay, you've done a sin, and okay, now I have forgiven you. It's as if you've never done it. And how do we do that? We return to Allah every time. Always constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's taqwa. Always constantly thinking about how to please Allah and how to avoid what is haram. How to do things that will make Allah happy and how to do, avoid things that will make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angry at us. And that is the way. So Rasulullah says, al -hasra ta Or whenever you do a bad deed, Rasulullah says, follow it up with a good deed. So either seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, recite azkar, la ilaha illallah, do a, give sadaqa, give some khairat. Remember that you have done a good deed. Don't let yourself forget that you have done a good deed. People who are always remind, mindful of their own sins are also on the right path. <coughs> because they know and it always haunts them they, that they have sinned and, and that motivates them to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Rasulullah says, وَخَالِقُ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ hasan," And always reach to people, reach out to people with the best of akhlaq. Maintain always good moral character. How you talk, how you behave, how you address people, how you talk to people, how you, how you deal with people. How you make sure that what you say, what you, uh, what you do, how you behave doesn't hurt feelings. Meaning, uh, every person, Allah didn't specify only Muslims. Allah says, everybody you deal with, maintain good akhlaq. You know, people talk about going door to door and doing tabligh and, and, and da'wah and inviting people. Ya akhi, just be a good Muslim. That is the best da'wah that there is. Be a good practicing Muslim in your at your jobs, at your work, at, uh, at home, in your families, in your relationships, everywhere. Be a good Muslim. Obviously, wow. that comes from learning what, what, what being good means. But for today's purpose, this is the message that we have. Uh, it's the month of Sayyidina Abdul Qadir Jilani. And these are the teachings that we get from uh, Quran and Sunnah. And this is what the uh, Ashab Kiram, Ahlul Bayt, and then after them, Awliya Allah, Alayhi Ridwan, have uh, carried on for us so that, that they are fresh and they are uh, representations of what are the teachings of Allah. So therefore, when we look up to awliya, it is looking up to a practical example of the learning from Quran and Sunnah. That's why we look up to awliya. Because they are practically doing what Allah wants us to do. They are practically emulating what Rasulullah ﷺ had done and taught us and wants us to follow in the path. And so looking up to the awliya, knowing what they uh, the, how their lives were, helps us feel that this is something that, that we can follow and, and reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so... Always we need to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, have taqwa in our hearts. We talked about what taqwa is. We also have to have good moral character. And we, if God forbid, if we sin, 
always return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it is not the end of the world. As long as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us hayat, as long as we are breathing, we have the opportunity to return to Allah and seek forgiveness and have everything erased and have the pathway, the doorway to heaven open. Wow. Until we have life. When our life will be gone, when the waqt naza when those last moments of death will, become, will arrive, then our doors will be closed. Or if Qiyamah is going to come, then the doors will be closed. While we have the opportunity, every day, every moment we walk, we should be mindful of all the bad things that we have been done. Alhamdulillah, there are people over here and others, who, as we are taught, to every night as you go to bed, remember all the things that you've done in the day. Assess them. Quantify them, qualify them, and identify what are the bad, bad things or, or uh, negative things that you might have done, and <coughs> make an intention to correct that next time, and then seek Allah's forgiveness. Wa ma'alayna illa al-balagh. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.